Hello Peachies! Welcome back to Dear Peachy! Knowing your body shape can be helpful when choosing clothes because it can give you a general idea of which styles and cuts of clothing may be most flattering for your figure. Once you've understood your body figure, shopping for clothes becomes easier and more efficient because you'll start to figure out what silhouettes will complement you best. If we count to three now, can you name your body shape? Most probably. These five body shapes will come to your mind. However, this body shape classification system is not perfect and may not be accurate for everyone. There are several reasons why the five body shape classification system is ineffective for determining a person's real body shape. It is impossible to accurately describe a person's body by five categories alone, as each body is unique. This is because a person might have a mixed body shape. You might think that you have a pear-shaped body, but somehow you realize that you have broad shoulders that looks like the inverted triangle body and a less prominent waistline that looks like a rectangle-shaped body. Things can get a little bit complicated. Every person's body is unique, and it is not uncommon for a person to have characteristics of more than one body shape classification. It is important to remember that body shape classification systems are not comprehensive and cannot accurately describe every person's body. There are more possibilities to this system, and different criteria can be used to classify people's bodies. Moreover, this classification system does not take into account a person's height, weight, or other physical characteristics, which can affect how clothes fit and look on them. Our bodies are changing over time, and any weight gain or loss may change our figure. We are not static objects. There is no scientific way of measuring body shapes, and sometimes it's just simply hard to judge one's own body. Hence, in this video today, we are going to introduce you a new method in identifying your body figure in a more thorough and detailed manner. By dissecting each physical component of your body, from shoulder, bust, waist and belly to the shape and size of your hips, this guide can assist you in finding out your own unique body shape and how to dress to enhance them. We can assure this guide can provide more practicality and objectivity to understand your body shape better. In this way, you don't have to waste money on clothes that aren't appropriate for your body type. As usual, this video is divided into several sections. Please refer to the timestamps for the following parts. The least subjective way to find your body shape is to measure yourself. Incorrect measurement methods, however, might lead to inaccurate results. Hence, we prefer to take a full-length picture of ourselves, which gives a more realistic representation of how our actual body looks. First, you should wear the simplest, most fitting clothing possible to avoid incorrect classification. Find a spot in your room with sufficient space and light. Place your phone at eye level, hold it straight and vertical to the ground. Turn on the back camera and start the recording button. Stand about 2.5 to 3 meters away from the camera. Make sure you stand straight with arms on your side. We will take a shot of the front and side view of our body. You can also take one or two steps closer to the camera to get a picture of how you would look in a normal social distance. If you stand closer to the camera, the camera lens might distort your body proportion. It tends to make the upper portion of your body look wider, while the lower part looks narrower instead. You will get a more accurate picture the further you stand from the camera. Once you have recorded the video, select the frame where you are positioned to stand still, screenshot it and crop out the extra spaces behind. First, let's look at your body proportion. Head height is one of the elements which cannot be overlooked. In the study of body proportions, the ideal proportions for the human figure are often represented by the canon of proportions. It is a set of proportions based on the work of the ancient Greek sculptor, Polycletos. According to this canon, the ideal human figure should be 8 head tall, with the head measuring 1 eighth of the total height. Therefore, a person who is 7 and a half head tall would be slightly shorter than the ideal proportion, but it is still within the average. If a person is shorter than 7 and a half head tall, it may make them appear shorter in overall stature compared to the ideal proportion. This measurement is used to determine the overall proportions of the body, as well as the fit of clothing. However, it is important to note that these proportions are just a theoretical ideal, and many people do not have proportions that match this ideal exactly. 
Many of us might be six heads tall, or even nine heads tall, and that doesn't matter. This ideals provides us a guide to know which part of our body affects the balance of our proportion. Is it the long torso, short legs, long neck, and so on? To measure your head height, you can just upload your picture to any editing app. Edit a round shape with a similar size to your head. Duplicate it according to your height, and check how many heads tall are you. Next, we are going to analyze our body shape by using the BSTI, Body Shape Type Indicator. In this classification system, we are going to analyze your body shape from three different dimensions. The body shape front view, the side view, and the shape and size of shoulders. Each dimension has several types of classification, and their combination will give rise to 96 unique types of body shape. The first dimension is to observe the front view of our body. With the picture taken just now, find the widest region of your bust and your hip. It may be their hips that are the widest, while it may be their thighs that are the widest. Wide hips normally have rounded hips, but wide thighs are usually shaped like a trapezoid. Let's look at the first scenario. If the width for your bust and hip are almost similar, and you do not have a very obvious waistline, then you are in the H body shape category. On the other hand, if your waistline is prominent, then you can put yourself in the X category. Usually, the overall body frame of X body shape will appear to be wider than H body shape. H shape body has smaller and narrower torso. Even given with the same waist size, your waistline will appear bigger in H body shape when compared to X body shape. In the second scenario, the width of your hip is bigger than the width of your bust. This is the A body shape, also called the pear body shape. The last scenario, if the width of your bust or shoulder is wider than the width of your hip, then you are in the Y category. It is more common for males to have the Y body shape, but it is relatively uncommon among females. Moving forward to the second dimension, we are going to look at the side view of our body. In the previous classification system, this dimension was not explained well and was too vague but it has a substantial impact on how you dress. Going back to the side view photos that you have taken just now, make sure that you are facing to the right. There are two parameters that we are observing in this dimension. The degree of protrusion for your bust and belly. If the chest and belly area are protruded at the same time, then this will be categorized as the uppercase B-shaped body. Furthermore, if only the chest area is protruded, but the belly appeared to be flat, this is categorized as the P-shaped body. In contrast, the chest area is flat but the belly area is protruded. Then this is the lowercase b body shape. Lastly, if both chest and belly area are flat, this is the I body shape. However, the buttocks in these four body shapes mentioned above are less prominent. If you are blessed with a more curvy hip naturally, or you've worked hard to get that booty, you can refer to the next four categories here. The S-shaped body has a bigger bust and buttock size. The D-shaped body has a less prominent chest but curvier hips. Moreover, if both belly and buttocks area are protruded, this is categorized as the DB body shape. Next, if the chest, belly, and buttocks area are prominent, this will be the D, uppercase B body shape. Hence, the combination of these two dimensions determines the shape of our torso and hips. For example, this model has the body shape with the combination of H frontal and B side silhouette, so this helps to give us an idea of what our overall torso and hips frame are. Next, we are going to look at the shape of our shoulders. Shoulders and necks are the parts separated from the torso. Shoulder shapes come in a variety of forms, and they can be complex. However, it is simplified into three main categories. The first category is the T-shaped shoulders. T-shaped shoulders have defined shoulder structure and somehow its shape resembles the cloth hanger. Many of the supermodels have such feature. So how do we know if we have the T-shaped shoulders? Let's look at the frontal view picture you have taken just now. Draw a straight line at the widest area of your bust, and draw another vertical line at the innermost and outermost region of your elbow. Find the protruded bone at the outermost of your shoulder, which is the bone we call the acromion. Mark the location of your acromion, observe where it is located. For people with T-shaped shoulders, it normally sits near the outermost vertical line of your elbow. They also have wider collarbones, and the bony peaks look broader. Nonetheless, 
The bust or torso region is smaller in proportion, and there is no excess fat under their arms. Next, the N-shaped shoulders. This type of shoulders is directly opposite of what T-shaped shoulders are. Its structure resembles the letter N. It is narrow and has no bony edges. The N-shaped shoulders appear more rounded. People who have such shoulders might face more obstacles when choosing the right top for their body shape. Unsuitable cuttings can make one look tired and slumpy instead. The acromion of the N-shaped shoulders is usually located close to the innermost vertical line. This illustration here shows the very typical AN-shaped body. Due to her wider hips ratio, her arms are not placed straight on her sides, perpendicular to the ground, forming a slightly slanted position. Therefore, we should also factor in this condition when analyzing our body shape. There is also another form of N-shaped shoulders. Some girls have really small body frame, and the width of their bust generally appears smaller. Even though the acromion is located close to the outermost vertical line, their shoulders still appear very narrow, and they can be categorized as the N-shaped shoulders as well. These girls usually are skinnier and has a very petite body frame. You can observe that they usually have the body shape combination of N-shaped shoulders, with I-shaped side silhouette and H-shaped torso, which gives the H-I-N body shape. The last category is the most common shoulder shape. The acromion is located around the middle between both inner and outermost vertical line. This type of shoulders do not appear too broad or too narrow. There is no distinctive feature to it. The structure does not appear rounded, nor even bony. Thus, it is categorized as the normal shoulder shape. Furthermore, due to the location of the acromion positioned at the middle of your elbow, your arms will tend to gain more volume when you put on weight. The volume at your arms will usually put more pressure to your outer chest area. As this shoulder shape is pretty common among the majority, there is no specific alphabet to represent it. This type of shoulders are commonly associated with general features like less toned arms, sloped shoulders, or rounded shoulders. These features can be refined with some style and hacks targeted to those areas. Given with the same torso shape, the normal shoulder shape has similar visual weight with the lower part of the body, whereas the N-shaped shoulders appeared to carry lower visual weight, and this disrupted the balance of the general appearance. The upper part of the body looks too light, and the bottom looks excessively heavy. So the outfit choices for N-shaped beauties will be more limited, compared to the normal shaped shoulders. The point here is, the more balanced your silhouette appears, the more visually pleasing your outfit will be. You can highlight the well-loved features of your body, and play down the other not-so-well-loved ones by using the right fits and cuts. To find out which features of your body require some balancing work, this body shape type indicator can be a useful starting point as long as you take it for what it is supposed to be. A rough guide. Keep in mind that they are not hard and fast rules to categorize your body shapes, because our bodies can change anytime. Before we proceed to the next section, let us make a quick roundup for the categories we mentioned just now. For frontal view, there are H, X, A, and Y. For side silhouette, there are uppercase B, lowercase B, P and I, S, D, and D with lowercase B, or uppercase B. For shoulder shape, there are T, N, and normal shaped shoulders. By combining these three dimensions here, it totals up to 96 types of body shapes. This body shape type indicator is able to provide classification into a vast collection of body types. So comment down below to tell us what your body shape is. Having this information handy would make your life much easier in the future, especially when finding the right outfit for yourself. Looking at your figure from the front, the important elements are the shoulders, waistline, and hips. The side silhouettes include the chest, belly, and legs. By focusing each of these areas, the body shape type indicator provides us with a more structured approach to dressing. Let's take a look at this table. We have organized different categories for each of these body areas. For the shoulders, there are broad, narrow, or sloped shoulders. For the waist, there are prominent waistline and the less prominent one. For the hips, there are wide and narrow hips. For the chest, bigger or smaller bust size. And we also address concerns for the belly and legs as well. As you can also see, we have marked the BSTI initials in accordance with the body shapes. Here are the body shape initials associated with the categories mentioned. We have sorted out the do's and don'ts for each of these categories. So please refer to the following section based on your body shape. Once you have understood your body shape, it is time for you to know if you want to refine or highlight the specific parts of your body. 
Let's begin with the shoulders. The difference in the design and shape of the neckline and the details around shoulders give tremendous effect to how your shoulders look. The depth and width of the neckline can have a different impact on your general appearance. Hence, the higher and the smaller the width of the neckline, the broader your shoulders appear. In other words, the wider neckline is suitable for broad shoulders, whereas the higher or the smaller neckline is suitable for narrow shoulders. If you would like to minimize the impression of broad shoulders, close with V-neck, wide rounded neckline, scoop neckline, square neckline, or the one shoulder neckline are the best choices for you to deliver more balance to your figure by directing attention vertically rather than horizontally. On the other hand, you should stay away from neckline designs such as jewel, turtleneck, and the straight across. The straight across design exposes the entire area of our shoulders and directs the attention to this region. By covering parts of the shoulders, it helps divert the attention away from this region. Other than the neckline designs, the cutting matters a lot too. Avoid wearing outfits with complex cuttings or patterns around the neck or chest area. The oversized puffy sleeves further expand the width of your shoulders as well. When you're buying trench coats, look at the size and design of the collars. The oversized collars are more suitable for those who have wider shoulders. The big collars take up the empty space between your collarbone and shoulders, therefore reducing the visual impact of the broad shoulders. You can also pick trench coats with a wider opening at the center, and those which have epaulets at the sides to fill this space up. Other than that, you can look at the location of the shoulder seam as well. It is best to choose clothes that have shoulder seam that is leaning inwards, because this helps bring your shoulders inwards, making them appear narrower than they actually are. Moving forward to narrow shoulders, or the N-shaped shoulders. The smaller neckline is more suitable, as it expands your shoulder area, and therefore creates a horizontal line around your shoulders. However, turtleneck design might be a little bit risky for narrow shoulders. The high neckline covers the entire skin area around your neck. Its tight fitting will further emphasize the structure of your shoulders instead. There are also more options for narrow shoulders. You can be playful with different designs around your chest and shoulder region. The puffed, cap, frill, flutter, Mutton leg sleeves are great designs to help extend the width of your shoulders. By doing so, the eyes will be tricked into believing your shoulders are broader than they are. Off-the-shoulder shirts are perfect for narrow shoulders too. Because the neckline is located around the shoulder and arm area, it brings a lot of emphasis to that part of the body which is ideal for narrow shoulders. Try to search for tops or blouses that have shoulder pads, as they help make your shoulders appear higher and more structured. As we have mentioned about shoulder seam just now, narrow shoulders should pick those with shoulder seam leaning outwards. It helps the shoulder to extend wider, giving more depth to your body structure. Moreover, avoid tops with deep V neckline, loose cutting with thin or flimsy fabric, and also those without shoulder seams. If you're buying trench coats, pick those with smaller collars, with structured stands and less falls, just like this one here. In the earlier part, we discussed that even though some of us might have normal shaped shoulders, but there are still specific concerns about sloped shoulders and rounded shoulders. To flatter the shape of sloped shoulders, opt for shirts that have a structured shape to the shoulder area. Besides that, choose clothes with fabrics that are able to hold up their shape. These outfits typically have the feel and shape of a suit, but they do not have to be that formal. Avoid sleeve designs that are pointing downwards, as it further emphasizes the slump structure making us look tired and weary. Try to choose tops that have intricate designs or cuttings at the upper region. This can help distract the focus from your shoulders. The Puritan collar is a great choice to give more depth to your shoulders too. For sloped or rounded shoulders, it generally presents with enlarged trapezius muscles. To accentuate your shoulders, the narrow V-neck polo blouse, narrow square neckline, and halter tops are right up your alley. Nevertheless, tops with rectangular necklines and puff sleeves, or boat necklines do not flatter your shape. Avoid choosing shirts that have tight fitting around the neck region, such as a knitted sweater or turtleneck. Next, we are moving forward to the next component, the waist and the belly. If you have the H-shaped body, it means that you lack a prominent waistline. The focus of this body shape should be on defining the waist. To balance out the upper body, we need to choose clothes that add curves and fullness to the lower body. First, highlight the lower parts of your body to create curves to your waist. You can wear skirts or pants that are high waist to create a defined waistline. 
The A-line skirt or shorts is your best choice to split the waist and hip. The flare of the skirt creates higher contrast to your waistline. The high-waisted cutting highlights the narrowest region below your ribs. It makes the midsection narrower and helps achieve a more proportional body shape. The straight cut or wide leg pants are pretty good options to give more volume to the lower part of your body. Belts are also a great way to create a waist. For tops, choose clothes that skim over the midsection, but nip right below the bust, lift the chest, and make the waist look trimmer. To create some curves, necklines such as scoop or jewel, sweetheart, off shoulder, v-neck necklines are excellent choices. If you're shopping for dresses, one thing to look out for in dresses is thus high waist definition. Avoid boxy and baggy styles and dresses that flare out too wide at the bottom. These will make you look bottom heavy. There are not many don'ts for the H-shaped body, as the H-shaped body is balanced at the upper and lower body. The only goal is to sculpt the waist in order to create the X-shaped figure. If you found yourself falling into the B categories, it shows that you have a wider midriff. These body shapes can appear top-heavy due to a fuller midsection with little to no waist definition. The aim is to de-emphasize the midsection by pulling it in visually. Although high waist bottoms are great pieces to sculpt your waist, you'd need to be extra careful if you want to hide the belly bulge. Most of us thought that tugging in our tops can accentuate our waist, but in reality, it causes our belly to look more bulgy. Avoid tucking in your top into the high-waisted jeans, as the shirt is stuffed into a pile beneath your jeans, and cause discomfort in the crotch area. To solve this issue, swap your high-waist jeans into a high-waist skirt. The flare of the skirt provides more room to your belly, and the outline of the belly is completely invisible from the side. If you want to wear jeans, change the top into a blouse. Half tuck your blouse into jeans. Not only does it lift your waistline, but the other half of your blouse is able to cover up the protruded outline of your tummy. Speaking about flare skirts, we know that the pleated skirt trend is back again. Nonetheless, the pleated skirt with stretchable waistband should be avoided. The narrow pleated skirt made with crepe fabric draws attention to the waist region due to its expanding visual effect. Not only does it expand the waist area, it also cuts out the natural curve of your body, making your body appear more boxy instead. Always search for a pleated skirt with wider pleats, with its flare beginning around the hips region. It is best if it does not have a stretchable waistband, so the slimming effect will be maximized. Not only that, stay away from styling yourself with the tight tops and tight bottoms. The tight fitting of the clothes will further highlight your body structure instead. Hence, the loose tops plus tight bottom is more suitable for those who want to accentuate their belly area. Wear floor length bottoms to make your body appear longer. The capri length is the least ideal, as they can shorten your proportion. Besides that, you can enhance your body ratio with short pants instead. Always look for shorts or any bottom pieces with pleats folding at the top. This pleats does excellent job in adding volume to the bottom piece, thus allowing more space for accentuating our belly. Wear structured garments as they hold in and camouflage extra weight. In addition, wearing clothes with straight waistline and relaxed fitted is a great way to de-emphasize your waistline. Avoid excessive fabric or designs around the midsection, as they will widen and highlight this region. Furthermore, the fabric choices are very crucial too. Fabrics with sheer or shine are not the best option for people who want to hide their belly bulge, as we all know that tight-fitting garments emphasize our body curves. And we often assume that these satin, loose tops or dresses are a safer choice for us. However, this assumption is incorrect, as these satin fabrics are soft and clings to skin easily. It sits on our skin when we move, and the glossiness of the fabric can emphasize the contour of our belly. Always go for fabric materials that have matte finish. Matte fabrics are the most slimming, as they absorb light. It is best to wear it at the body regions that we want to camouflage, for example the belly area. Lastly, stay away from clothes that are made with soft fabric that clings to our skin, such as knitted fabrics if you are less confident with your belly region. Next, we will look at the hips. There are two conditions, the wide and narrow hips. The A-shaped body has wider hip ratio, and Y-shaped body has narrower hip proportion. For narrow hips or the Y-shaped body, the goal for dressing this shape is to add curves to the hips and bottom. Select clothes that add volume to the lower body to widen the hips. You can opt for loose cutting pants, such as straight cut, boyfriend jeans and relaxed fit jeans. Choose skirts that flare out, 
like the pleated skirt or the midi skirt. The only don'ts for narrow hips is to keep away from tight fitting, skinny and tight bottoms that visually reduce the lower body. It is fine if you want to wear tight fitting bottoms. Go for lighter colors when choosing the bottom piece. Lighter colors have an expanding visual effect, which means it can make your hips appear wider and become the focal point of your entire look. Whenever you're wearing skinny pants, just remember to match it with a blazer or a cardigan that is long enough to reach the region below your hip. On the other hand, the A-shaped body or a broader hip will be highlighted with skinny or tight trousers too. The key to dressing this body shape is to take attention away from the wider hips and to draw it towards the upper body and define waist instead. Hence, it is more advisable to pick loser cuts for your bottom. As we know that loser cuts can divert the attention from your hips, but pants that are overly loose for your shape will do the opposite. The wide leg jeans are one of the items you should stay away from. Jeans fabrics are generally stronger and harder, hence it holds its shape better than other softer materials. The wide leg jeans do not accentuate your hips, as the material doesn't enhance your shape, and this creates an impression of wider hips instead. Just go for bottom pieces that have a relaxed fit around your hips and thighs region because the excessively loose bottom pieces will pull your body proportion lower. Go for pants that are made with fabrics that have better drape. As opposed to narrow hips, wide hips should choose darker colors instead. Steer clear of embellished bottoms that draw attention to the lower body. Solid dark colors are your safer choice. The blazer or cardigan trick works well on broad hips too. Pair your skinny jeans with a long blazer to emphasize your hips and bring more balance to your figure. Or you can pull out the edges of your blouse from the sides to make your hips appear smaller. Not only that, we have some extra tips for you when buying pants. There are a few things you can observe before you pick out the right pants for yourself. First, look at the waist belt. The distance between the front and back piece of the waist belt should not be less than 2cm. For example, the figure below shows the front and back piece of the waist belt overlapping each other, leaving no distance between them. This types of pants are not friendly to broad hips as they have little room around the crotch area. It makes the pants too tight and uncomfy for you. Second, look at the yoke of the pants. Some big terms here, but that's the name for this part right here. The bigger the V-curve of the yoke, the better it fits on people who have wide hips, but less curvy on their bottom. Third, if you have concerns around your belly area and would like to de-emphasize your wide hips, Try to search for pants with a waistline dart at the front. The folded cuts are able to provide more room for the belly region. The wider the waistband, the better it will look on you. Observe the shape and flow of the pant leg. Search for those that have relaxed fit, rather than the loose wide cut. The slight fit at the buttocks area can give your bottom a nice boost, which gives you the hourglass figure. For anyone who is less confident about their legs and wishes to accentuate them, you can refer to these tips here. If you have thicker calves, choose dresses that have side slit and paired it with sandals. This combination allows just the right amount of skin exposure to lengthen your figure. Besides that, wear a cropped t-shirt with straight pants with a relaxed fit cut. The cropped t-shirt lifts the visual focus of your waistline higher and makes your legs look slender. An A-lined or flare skirt with length that hems right at the mid-calves are a friendly option as well. Apart from that, the choices of your shoes matters too. Sandals with heels expose more skin area around your feet, and this creates the optical illusion of longer leg proportion. Moreover, these clear heels are your must-get items to trick people into thinking you are taller than you actually are. Platform shoes are your best friends in adding the extra length to your legs. Just search for shoes designs that have thicker soles. They can be extremely helpful to enhance your overall figure. All of the tips mentioned above are applicable for legs with poor alignment too. Lastly, we are going to talk about the bust. There is no best bust size. It is all up to us if we want to conceal or emphasize to achieve the best silhouette that we want. If you want to tone them down, you should emphasize the waist. Tops or dresses that hug your waist will distract the gaze a little from your bust. If the attention is more on your waist, your silhouette will appear more balanced. Wear structured garments with defined hemlines and cuts to balance out the curves of your bust. Open the top bun of the blouse to optically extend the line of the neck and thus ensure more balanced proportions. However, you should stay away from high neck tops or turtlenecks to avoid making the upper body seem shorter. 
Tops and dresses with flounces and ruffles can make the bust look bigger as well. Furthermore, avoid oversized garments that can make you look bloated with no defined figures. If you are wearing a loose straight dress, add belts to separate the bust and the waist. For those who want to emphasize your bust area, then you will need to do the opposite. Choose tops made with fabrics with high shine or gloss to accentuate the chest even more. Wear a blouse with bows, ruffles, or lace designs to add dimension to your chest. Blouse with pockets at the chest area is a smart tip to create the illusion of a fuller chest too. The double breast design is a classic way to add volume to your bust too. If you want to accentuate your chest, it is best to avoid any tightly fitted clothes. They don't help in adding curves to your chest. Stay away from any outfit that clings to your body. If your goal is to direct attention away from your chest, low necklines generally are not ideal, since these designs draw attention to your breasts. Corset is one of the most feminine designs ever invented. The boning provides support for the breast, and it gives that boost to make them look full. However, if you are one who has a smaller bust, it highlights the impression that there is less volume around the region. As we have discussed about the shoulders, waist, belly, hips, legs, and busts. We are going to the last section, how to dress to look taller. There's a concept called rule of thirds that will help you put together more flattering outfits almost instantly, no matter how cute the individual pieces are. If the proportion of your outfit is off, it may look frumpy or unflattering. When we are dressing ourselves, keep in mind that we should divide our body into such ratio. One third is on the top, and the two third is on the bottom. You can create this ratio by following this petite girl's styling formula. Besides wearing crop tops, tucking in your shirt, and matching with high waist bottoms to shift your waistline higher, here are the formulae that can be applied in any styling conditions. If you're wearing a longer top, which ends around the hips region, you should wear shorts or short skirts. Longer bottoms such as pants or skirts that cut at ankle or floor length, you should pair it with tops that end above the hip region. Of course, a combination of shorter tops with short bottoms can maximize the lengthening effect to your overall figure. These tips can make your legs appear longer and have a leaner figure. Next, take a look at this figure here. Which rectangle appears to be longer? Is it rectangle A? The answer is both rectangles have the same height. Hence this shows that we should dress to emphasize our vertical structure to elongate our figure. If you want to wear longer tops with longer bottoms, Try to wear a similar color palette for the top and bottom, as this helps lengthen the vertical proportion visually. Shoes with a similar color palette also create the illusion of a longer figure too. Next, we will show you a few must-have items for a petite girl's wardrobe to help you look slender and taller. Number 1. The High Waist Trousers We all know how these high waist bottom pieces has helped us look more proportionate instantly, but the length matters too. 7-8 cropped are great choices, as long as the ankle is not covered. Other than that, the floor-length straight-cut jeans are the holy grail to petite beauties. Pair it with heels or chunky loafers. You will definitely know the magic of these pants. Pick garments made with fluid fabrics, because the flowy and soft drape of the fabric can make your figure look leaner, lengthening your body proportion, whereas the overly thick and heavy fabrics are less suitable. Other than heels, or shoes with thicker soles. The pointed toe or square toe pumps help create the visual impression of longer legs. Due to the time and content constraints, we may not be able to elaborate further on this, but this is the general idea for you to understand how you should structure your outfit. After you have identified your body shape type and get to know how to dress up to accentuate your body figure, it's easy to find a style that suits you so you can observe each of your body shape characteristics and decide which to enhance or highlight in order to bring out the distinctive style of yours. First, analyze the specific features of your body. For instance, you have found that you have the HBT body shape with slightly thicker calves. It is known that some of the specific body shapes looks better in certain styles. So even if you think that some body parts of yours are less ideal than what you expected, they might be a plus point that makes you stand out more with the suitable style. Let's say that you would like to go for a more sexy, feminine, and romantic style. The T-shaped or wide shoulders might not be the ideal for other people, 
but it helps you to look great in soft and fluid fabrics that are commonly seen in the feminine sexy looks. As a result, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, but rather a tailored approach. Back to the example, the HBT body shape with thicker calves can be enhanced with the feminine style by highlighting the fuller bust and wider shoulders, and dress to give more defined waistline and tone down on the belly in order to maximize the beauty of your body proportion. With all this information in mind, you can start to search for pieces that not only goes well with your style preference, and most importantly bring out the best of your body shape. Dressing is about bringing out your own style and expressing it with pride. Knowing your proportions will help you design a wardrobe that emphasizes your favorite parts of your body and balances your figure. Being comfortable in your own skin is essential to prance around with confidence and poise. To achieve that, you'll need to find outfits that highlight your body's best features. We hope this guide helps you strip off from any doubts and embrace your body to its full potential. Now go on and choose an outfit that will look and feel great to add an extra sparkle to your appearance. We wish you'll have more clarity as to how to play up your style and celebrate your special attributes. Comment below and let us know which styling tip that you like the most. Thank you so much for watching Peaches. We will see you in the next video. Goodbye!